her interested in vintage photography. It all started with that damn camera. I guess I should start from the beginning. Everyone who knows me knows I love collecting vintage cameras. I check flea markets and thrift stores regularly to look for my next score. I had already checked all of the local places in the past month, so my boyfriend and I decided to venture up north to check for thrift stores we have never been to. I didn't have much of a plan in mind. We figured we would look for places along the way. On a particularly rough country road, we saw a tattered board-style sign for a place called Bill's Thrifty Finds. We were unfamiliar with the area, so I decided to use navigation to take us to our destination. The business's address was not available online, but thankfully the sign said it was on Klein Road. I plugged it into Google Maps and we were on our way. We drove for about 10 minutes on rough country roads that have probably not been repaired in 20 years. We pulled onto Klein Road, which was surprisingly in decent condition. The area was heavily forested and there were maybe three businesses on the long road. No wonder this place has no online presence. This is in the middle of nowhere, I chimed to Jeff. We parked in front of the decrepit looking thrift shop. My excitement kind of faded a little when I saw how run down the building looked. I highly doubted there would be any kind of treasure here, but we decided to check it out anyway. I pushed open the door and was hit by a very strong musty odor. As I stepped into the store, I noticed how horribly disorganized the place was. I also noticed that the two windows and a cruddy lamp seemed to be the only sources of light in the building. There was a gruff-looking man who appeared to be in his 60s or 70s behind the counter. I assumed this was the bill the store was named after. He was reading a magazine and didn't even glance at us when we walked in. I thought he would be surprised to have customers, but from the looks of him, I assumed he probably didn't care much about anything these days. I started scanning the disarray for photography equipment. After stepping over a pile of old children's toys, I made my way to a dirty-looking dresser that had a surprisingly pristine-looking camera resting atop it. I picked it up and inspected it. It was a nice 35mm SLR camera that appeared to be from the early 70s. I tested the film advance mechanism and shutter, and it seemed to be in working order. It was from a brand I had never heard of. The small white tag hanging from the camera listed the price as $12. It wasn't a steal, but it wasn't outlandish either. I can't explain why, but I felt inexplicably drawn to this camera. Do you like this one? I asked Jeff. It looks pretty cool to me, he responded. He didn't really share my love of cameras, but he liked how excited I got over them. We walked up to the counter to make our purchase. Cash only, said the man, without glancing up from his magazine. Here you go, I said as I handed him $13 in cash. He held out his hand and accepted the money, without looking up to see how much money I gave him or what I even purchased. We walked through the summer humidity to our car. Wow, he was kind of rude, I said to Jeff. He nodded in agreement. Now that we were out of that dump, I decided to inspect the camera a little closer. It had a solid black metal body with a few textured plastic accents. Basically, it looked like your typical 1970s 35mm camera. I popped the back of the camera open and noticed there was a used roll of film in it. Hey Jeff, check this out. There's an old roll of film in here. I wonder what's on it. Do you think we should get it developed? Well, film expires and I highly doubt the pictures would be any good, but we could try it anyway. You know, for shits and giggles? Sounds like a plan to me. We decided to wait to develop the photos until after we had shot our first roll of film with the camera. The camera seemed to be a pretty good one. I took pictures of flowers and other various things around our local park. Then I took a few of my boyfriend, and he took one of me on top of the park's jungle gym. Those are cliché photography subjects, I know, but I was mainly just testing the camera out. We dropped the rolls of film off to be developed. We went back to pick them up the next day. When we got home, I started to inspect the photos. I was absolutely blown away at how crisp and clear the photos were, given the fact that the film was likely upwards of 20 years old. The first several photos were pretty typical photos. A little girl, a big black dog, a happy family of three, etc. 
The last 10 photos, however, were exact duplicates of a single photo. I figured the pharmacy messed up and accidentally developed the same photo 10 times. I took a closer look at the photo. It was the same little girl from the other pictures, sitting on a swing in the park. She looked different than in the other photos, though. Instead of a wide smile, her mouth was turned down into a tight grimace. Her hands were gripped so tightly on the swing's chain that you could see her knuckles had turned white. The image really, really creeped me out, but I shrugged it off. What a ripoff. They printed the same photo ten times, I said to Jeff. Well, it's a surprise they even developed at all, so we didn't get it too bad, he replied. Yeah, I guess you're right. Should we look at the negatives and see what didn't get printed? I walked over to the lamp on the table. I held the first sheet of negatives to the light. It was the family photos I had seen before. It was the same for the second sheet of negatives. I held the third sheet up to the lamp. Now I saw the duplicate photo was not a printing error. On the original film, there were several identical photos of the girl on the swing. I scanned through them to look for tiny differences between the photos, because I knew it would be impossible to hold the exact same pose for ten different shots. Yet somehow, the face and pose were identical in all of the photos. It took me a second to realize the small difference between the photos. A chill ran down my spine as I spotted a dark figure looming in the distance behind the girl. It was hard to see anything in the negatives, but I knew whatever it was was not human. The hair stood up on the back of my neck when I progressed through the negatives and noticed something. In every photo, the figure was getting closer. It started in the left corner near a tree, but it seemed to get a few steps closer in each frame. In the last shot, it was about five feet away from the girl. Even though I was terrified, I felt stupid for not noticing the figure in the prints. It was so obvious. I pulled out the prints and shuffled through to the photos of the little girl on the swing. I was shocked when I saw that the figure was completely absent in the prints. How could this be? I saw it so clear in the negatives. Was I going crazy? It struck me as odd that this figure showed up black in the photo negatives, where colors are reversed. If this whole thing followed logic, the figure should actually be pure white in real life. I thought to myself that maybe it could be some sort of guardian angel, trying to put myself at ease. But as I continued to look at the negatives, I knew that this was not an angel. This thing was an evil, sinister being. Judging by the lack of any sign of the figure in the prints, I did not think this thing was a source of pure light. I think that it somehow made those spots in the negatives completely devoid of light. I called Jeff over and asked him to look at the negatives. He held them up to the lamp for a few moments. Holy shit, what the hell is that thing? He said, clearly taken aback. I don't know, but look at the prints, it's not there, I said. He inspected the prints, then held the negatives up to the lamp again. Wow, you're right. That's really weird. Do you think the photography shot played some kind of prank on us? No, it's not a prank. Those photos should not be that clear after all this time. There shouldn't be ten separate shots with the same pose. That figure shouldn't be visible in the negatives and not the prints, I said on the verge of tears. Get that haunted shit out of my house. Okay, I'll go throw them in the dumpster in the city that I work in. How does that sound? Jeff said calmly. He was trying to comfort me, but I kind of got the sense that he thought my reaction was kind of funny. Thanks, babe, I said quietly. That night I lay awake in bed, unable to sleep. The images had shaken me so much. Normally I look for a logical excuse over anything paranormal. But when I saw that figure in the negatives, the idea of a rational explanation went out the window for me. I just couldn't get the whole thing out of my mind. Dark thoughts started to fill my mind. I realized that after looking at the negatives from the old photos upset me so much, I hadn't bothered to look through the photos that Jeff and I took on the camera. I had a deep fear in my stomach that I would find that same figure in the photos of Jeff and I. The thought scared me so much that I didn't want to look. Another 30 minutes of no sleep passed, and the whole time the curiosity and fear was gnawing at my thoughts. I had to look at our prints. I slid quietly out of bed and walked into the living room, where the photo envelopes and the camera were sitting on the table. I turned on the lamp and went through the photos. 
I looked at the prints first. There was nothing abnormal about them. That gave me a little bit of relief. I took a deep breath and pulled the negatives out of the envelope. I scanned each shot carefully as I held them up to the lamp. The landscape shots looked completely normal. I began to scan the photos of Jeff. I was relieved to find no dark presence behind him in any of the photos. That relief quickly ended when I got to the negative of me on top of the jungle gym. Several yards behind me, there was a very dark spot. It was very hard to see any details in the negative, but I knew what it was. My stomach sank. I don't know why it was in the photo of me, but not in the photos of Jeff. It has been about a week since this happened. I have no clue what this figure is, or what it has the capability of doing to me. Whatever it is, I know there's no way in hell anything good can come out of this.